The only thing that moves the story is conflict. Without conflict, there is no tension, no driving force. So the first thing we do when we sit down to create a new plot is to figure out who's at odds with who, to figure out what is the source of the conflict. Once we have that, we can use that conflict to create tension. And when we have a game that creates tension, our players will be excited. They will want to know what's going to happen. They will be more invested and engaged in our game. If we can create tension as GMs, we are bound to have a better campaign with players that want to return for more. So where can we find conflict? That's the question I'm going to answer throughout the video. Ready? Let's go. What's up, Battle Thumps? My name is Avian and I help game masters run excellent games with confidence and today we're doing it with conflict. When we have a good conflict in mind, the rest of the story almost builds itself. But finding the right idea can be tricky. And while I can't help you find the right conflict for your game from this weird or the demiplane, I can give you some ideas on where you might look for it. We can find conflict in many places, but let's start with my personal favorite, factions. Factions are the movers and shakers of your world. Organizations that you have either developed during world building or taken from the many source books that the game has to offer. The trick here is not to create more factions, but rather explore the existing relationships between them. Our goal here is to understand the current state of their relationship so we can locate places where we can insert intrigue. We can then use that intrigue to create plot by tying it to our game. Our question now becomes, how are the characters going to be involved in this? What's going to happen? Who's going to approach them? What event are they going to be a part of? One of my favorite examples of all time is the world of Dragon Age. Thedas is probably the best game world I had ever encountered. And mild spoilers, one of the recurring conflicts throughout the series is that of the mages and templars. It is present in all games of the series and it consistently creates tension and drives plot. Magic in Thedas is very dangerous, and it's not uncommon for the practitioners to become possessed, turning into monstrous abominations. The Templars want to protect the world from these monsters, while the Circles of Magi want to practice magic and teach their students how to protect themselves from these hideous transformations. The Templars and Mages have a deep distrust between them. Templars often see mages as careless walking bombs that could turn abomination every second, and the mages view Templars as ignorant prisoners that deny their freedom. Extreme individuals within these factions can further push the already tenuous relationship between mages and Templars. Maybe a grief-struck Templar chooses to kill mages so they can never become these horrible monsters. Or maybe a small sect of mages wants freedom from their shackles and are willing to make some moral sacrifices to achieve it. Now, this is just one example of an excellent conflict between factions, and there are plenty others you can take inspiration from. But let's talk about another source of conflict, the player characters. If you work with your players to create a backstory for their characters, you already know a lot about them. You know their meaningful relationships and their foundation within the world. Now, I know that not everyone writes characters this way, so if that's not your style, you can skip this part. But personally, I always ask my players to leave loose ends when they create characters because it helps me ground them within the world, to create the feeling that, even for a little while, the story is about them. When we know which relationships matter to them, what promises they hold dear, what businesses they left unattended, we can use that to create plot that feels personal. For example, if one of the characters has a mentor figure, we can think of them as one side of that conflict. The enemy of the mentor would immediately become the enemy of the character, right? If the character learns that their mentor was kidnapped, they would feel motivated to rescue them. But that's not the only thing we can do with a mentor figure. We could, for example, decide that their mentor is not exactly who they thought they were. We can use that same character to develop a personal and more complicated enmity. For example, if the mentor is a paladin, we could decide that they have become an oathbreaker. Can the students save the mentor from themselves and set them back on the right path? Or will they follow their footsteps into the darkness? This video is sponsored by my patrons. 
who are generally the coolest plants on the internet and I love them. For those of you who are new here, I create new D&D content every month and this month I made its bigger on the inside. It's a deadly one-shot adventure where the characters have to escape an arcane death trap. For more information, check the Patreon link in the description. The third place where we can find conflict is in the consequences of the player's choices. The players in our game have agency, they control their characters and make decisions, and the consequences of these decisions can be used to create plot. This is an excellent practice because it creates the feeling of a real world, a world that actually reacts to the character's actions. Doing that is simple. We think about the previous few sessions and try to pinpoint possible sources of tension. So for example, say that one of the characters got in a fight with a thug from an infamous gang. The character defeated the thug and killed him. Now a session later we've decided that the gang is going to try and ambush the party to avenge their fallen member. We have now escalated the enmity between the party and the gang. Who knows what will happen next? When we have the conflict settled, more ideas will start popping up and the entire process will be easier. That's the real secret of creating plot. You have to know what the conflict is and then push on it as much as you can. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, like, subscribe and share this video with a friend. We also have a lovely community on Discord and we always want more GMs aboard with us. Until next time friends, remember that you are awesome, keep being awesome and I'll see you beyond the screen.